as we celebrate the life of Ruth Nell Frick. May God grant us grace that in our pain we may find comfort, in sorrow, hope, and in death, resurrection. I am truly grateful for your presence. I am grateful to be gathered together with you to praise God and celebrate now. Okay. Turn on your mic. Turn on the mic. I'm so sorry. But I know, I, I trust you heard what you needed to hear so far. I am truly grateful for us, that we are gathered. Uh, this service, uh, from the hymns to the scripture readings that are in the, listed in the bulletin to the anthem that the choir sings, has been chosen by now for us in this time. So I'm grateful for that as well. Um, after the service, there is a re reception. So we'll go out the door and to the left, to the left, my left, your something else. Um, <laughs> to the fellowship hall is down below, where there's some insights here so you can go around this way. Um, so please stay and enjoy that time because I will share some things and, and Archie will share some, and um, but there's lots more to share and stories to tell and things that you know and you learn and we're blessed um, by you all. Uh, so share that with one another. Um, the hymns and the responsive reading of the psalm will be projected on the screen for you, but there's hymnals if like me you like to, to hold the book. So again, I am so grateful for your presence here. Would you stand and we are going to sing over a thousand times to sing? Loving God, we praise you for the great company of all those who have finished their course in faith and now rest from their labor. We praise you for those dear to us whom we lay in our hearts before you. Especially we praise you for now whom you have graciously received into your presence. To all of these, grant your peace. Let your light shine upon them, and help us so to believe where we have not seen, 
that your presence may lead us through our years and bring us at last with them into the joy of your home, not made with hands, but eternal in the heavens. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now if you would, uh, you can either turn to 844 in the hymnal for our responsive reading, or you can follow along on the screen. Psalm 121. I we stand. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From whence does my help come? I know the Lord, who made the earth. The Lord would not let your foot be moved. The Lord who keeps you would not slumber. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade on your right hand. The sun shall not smite you by day, nor will you by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil and will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time forth and forevermore. Thank you. Be seated, please. Gospel reading comes from the Gospel according to John, chapter 14, verses 1 to 6 and 27. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And then he said, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. May God add his blessing to the reading and hearing of his holy word. Carolyn and my wife Carolyn and I very much loved and appreciated Mel. She was a, a lovely person, as we can all testify, <laughs> who never called attention to herself. But what about doing good? in a very loving and dignified way. I'd like to read a few words written by the Reverend Judy Liu, who works a lot with Mel at the Florida United Methodist Heritage Center, located in the McKay Archive Center on the campus of Florida Southern. One of life's greatest blessings is a friend, and I am so thankful I had a friend in Nell Fred. Over the years, she became my mentor for the archives, but so much more. Her classy, intelligent, loving heart blessed my family and me. Her love for others, her church, for reading, collecting, learning, and traveling was inspiring. 
I would miss her terribly, but praise God for her remarkable life and the many ways she blessed others. Thank you, Judy, for expressing God's life so succinctly. Mel loved many different things. She loved beautiful music and all forms of, of art. She attended, you know, nearly every event in our community, every concert. She enjoyed taking part in the life of her church, this church, for all those years. And then serving the greater church. For 23 years, she served as the archivist of the Florida Conference. Serving as a member of the Florida Conference's Commission on Archives and History, as well as the, the Southeastern Jurisdictional Conference, its historical society. And a lot of people don't know this, but through those years that she served in the, this position, she, she helped hundreds of clergy families who needed to write a memoir for their their loved one who had died that year. And she would be assisting them doing this. I worked with her for a number of years and she was always so faithful in helping these families. And then each year at annual conference, she would be willing to take part in the, the memorial service, the service of remembrance, as we remember those who had died, the, the clergy and the spouses the, the previous year. And now did all of these things and, and so much more, as Judy said. So we simply give thanks for the extraordinary person that Mel was. And we entrust her and her sister Mary and Carlisle, her brother-in-law, to God's loving care. There are certain women who stand out among the rest. Certain women who become icons of their generation, icons within their circle of influence. There are certain women whose love and passion for life has changed us, made us better for knowing them, for loving them, and having them loved by them, certain women. Scripture names them just like that, certain women. Women who were dedicated followers of Jesus, some independently wealthy and independent of fathers and husbands, these certain women lived and loved and helped spread the good news. In the Gospel of Mark, chapter 5, there was a certain woman who suffered an illness and who dared to reach out and touch the hem of Jesus' robe in order to be healed. She reached out through the crowd, reached across convention and propriety and laws that said that she shouldn't even be there. She was certain, certain that if she could just touch the fringe of Jesus' robe, she would be healed. And she was healed. In chapter 7 of that same gospel, a certain woman had a daughter. The daughter needed healing. This certain woman dared to argue with Jesus on behalf of her daughter. A woman certain that she stood on the side of justice and righteousness who fought for her child, fought for what was right. And she was right, and her daughter was healed. Certain women. Those two women were unnamed in Scripture. In Luke chapter 10, there is another certain woman, 
This one is named, a woman named Martha. A woman who is famous for her hospitality and her family's friendship with Jesus. This certain woman opens her home to welcome Jesus and his companions. She prepares food and she prepares a place for rest and conversation. Certain women. One more. Another woman named at this time in, Acts, in the Acts of the Apostles, a certain woman named Lydia. I'm going to read from the Acts of the Apostles. It's, she's her story, little piece of it, is in Acts chapter 16, and I'm going to read verses 13 through 15. But in this section of the Acts of the Apostles, we're traveling with Paul. He travels to Philippi and heads to a place just outside the city, a place of prayer by the river. Once there, we encounter a group of women gathered together on the Sabbath. Let's listen. <clears throat> on the Sabbath day, we went outside the gate by the river, where we supposed there was a place of prayer, and we sat down and spoke to the women who had gathered there. A certain woman, a woman named Lydia, a worshiper of God, was listening to us. She was from the city of Thyatira and a dealer in purple cloth. The Lord opened her heart to listen eagerly to what was said by Paul. When she and her household were baptized, she urged us, saying, If you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come and stay at my home. And she prevailed upon us. Elaine Wainwright writes, Her name, Lydia, tells us she is from among the citizen class of the Greco-Roman world. In the story, we're told she is a householder, and we are told she is a businesswoman, a seller of purple cloth. These details about her suggest she was a free woman of Hellenistic or Roman origin. She may be widowed or never married. She's a businesswoman, a householder, and has made a seemingly independent choice to join this, this, this gathering of Jewish women for worship. This same independence is evident in her openness to the message that Paul brings and in her response to being baptized along with her entire household, it says. Her authority and independence is evident also when she invites Paul and his companions to stay, to stay at her home. <coughs> A certain woman, Lydia, a woman of prayer, a seller of purple cloth, a woman who comes to believe and then shares her resources. She is certain that she is to support the spread of the gospel in her community by supporting those who bring the good news. Certain women. Now Thrift was a certain woman. A woman whose life we celebrate today and who I trust you heard echoes of, of her life in the lives of the certain women that I've named so far. I was first introduced to Nell at annual conference. I was a young woman, a new lay member of the annual conference. We were gathered at the Lakeham Center, um, and Nell was invited to the podium to share about the anniversary ch churches and the ministry milestones. To me, Nell stood out among the others. She was a certain woman. She was poised, prepared, articulate, very much at ease in front of the conference. I could tell that she loved sharing with us what she brought each year. Now, in the scheme of things, the work of the Conference Commission on Archives and History was only a small part of the goings, goings on at annual conference. But as a certain woman, as the Florida Conference archivist, 
now made an impression on me. It was many years ago. Later, when I became annual conference secretary, I learned more of what it meant uh, for Nell to be the archivist. Um, what are you <laughs> um, I learned about her work each year um, in gathering and editing the memoirs uh, for those who had died, the clergy and their spouses. And she even wrote the ones for when no family could be found or when they couldn't, didn't have, have it in them to, to be able to write something. No, always thought it was important. Everyone should be remembered. I learned of the Heritage Center, the campus of Florida Southern, named from Terrence, Charles, and Ruth Thrift. Her father, Dr. Charles T. Thrift, Jr., served as president of Florida Southern from 1957 to 1976. I learned about all that Nell and her trusted volunteers, all that they held and cared for and cataloged at the Heritage Center. The documents, the journals and artifacts, the histories and biographies and hymnals and so much more. When I became a pastor, I learned of this certain woman's work and influence not only in the Florida Conference, but again, in the Southeastern Jurisdiction, the Historical Society and the Commission on Archives and History. Now that's just her work in archives and history. Her history, Nell's history, includes uh, being an outstanding and beloved English teacher at Lakeland High School for 36 years. It's like two lifetimes, right? She was Polk County Teacher of the Year in 1979. Some of you here, that was how you were first introduced to this certain woman. You were her students, her colleagues, and PEO sisters. Others of us gathered here today, near and far, uh, were first introduced to this certain woman as neighbor, antique collector, a traveling companion, or as a fellow church member. However we met her, we knew her, loved her, were loved by her, and we give thanks for this certain woman who journeyed with us in this life and who is now joined with the saints above and those certain women, named and unnamed. I could tell you so much more about this certain woman. I could tell you how she provided wonderful, inspiring, and fun programs on so many facets of our history as the people called Methodist. She always had wonderful program ideas for our fellowship dinners and always, always took time and went out of her way to greet and speak to the children and young people who were present at all of those programs. She was wonderfully prepared when it was her turn to lead her Sunday school class. And as one student or uh, participant remembered, she brought a lightness to the class. And she will be profoundly missed. Lastly, I could tell you that she collected and saved and archived countless treasures, not only at the Heritage Center, but at home. A um, consummate archivist. Uh, now collected lots of things, some of them stamps, Wedgwood, books, all things John Wesley, and anything to do with England, and she even had, still had some of the writings and poems of her former students. Wow. As her health declined, Nell greatly appreciated all of the kindness and thoughtfulness shown to her by her neighbors and friends. Her sister Mary has said what a great comfort it was to her to have so many guardian angels watching out for Nell, um, there to take her places and otherwise just being there for her as she needed. 
It meant much to now, but it also meant so much to Mary. It gave Mary peace of mind, for which she will always be grateful. So thank you. Certain women. Certain women become icons in their generation. Icons within the Florida Conference. Icons within the Southeast jurisdiction and her work in archives and history. Icons within the circle of their influence. There are certain women whose love and passion for life has changed us, made us better for knowing them, better for loving them, and having been loved by them. Today we give thanks for this certain woman now forever. Let's pray together. Oh God, we do give you thanks for the life and witness of your beloved, this certain woman who has touched our lives, now thrift. And God, I pray that we continue to um, allow her witness, her influence, to continue to shape our lives and how we live. I am so grateful that you have brought us together to give thanks to you and to continue to remember and share and love. Continue your presence with us. Pray and give thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. I invite you to stand as you're comfortable. We're going to sing the hymn of promise. It's number 707. Sunday for a pastor, it's been sung at funerals and memorial services, including uh, your, your mother's service, Nell's mother's service. Uh, so, and it's based on Philippians 1, and it's a, it's a prayer of thanksgiving and joy and in thinking of you and remembering you. 
So that kind of works both ways. And Nell and her expressing joy and gratitude for the ways that you blessed her life, and now hearing it back um, in that same way.
Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. O oh God, receive and help into the arms of your mercy. Raise her up with all your people. Raise us also, and raise us into a new life. Help us so to love and serve you in this world that we may enter into your joy in the world to come. God of love, we thank you for all with which you have blessed us even to this day. For the gift of joy in days of help and strength and for the gifts of your abiding presence and promise in days of pain and grief. We praise you for home and friends and for our baptism and place in your church with all who have faithfully lived and died. Above all else, we thank you for Jesus, who knew our griefs, who died our death, and rose for our sake and who lives and prays for us. And as he taught us, so now we pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We are going to sing, A mighty fortress is our God. Would you stand if you are able and serve our own time?
love all the times at United Methodist Church. I'm going to have no qualms in being biased or anything about that. Um, and in 1987, her book of the history of this church was written or was published. Um, at the urging and persuasion of her good friend, her pastor, and fellow historian, uh, Reverend Bob Temple. Uh, the epilogue in the book is it's titled, A Charge to Keep I Have. And I'm going to read the last three sentences. We must now dedicate ourselves anew to the ongoing task of serving in God's kingdom and proclaiming the gospel. Our past must serve as inspiration for our commitment to the greater work of tomorrow. May we be born on the wings of faith that guided those who preceded us. Certain women and certain men, I send you out to do just that. Would you go with the love of God? the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, and go in peace. Amen. Amen.